The telegraph is arguably one of the most significant advances in communication technology ever created. It fundamentally altered the ways in which language could travel over long distances by allowing it to travel faster than written messages could be carried. The telegraph emerged during the height of European imperialism as the necessity grew to send information to remote areas quickly. Ultimately, telegraph wires impacted the outcomes of wars, effectively eliminated distance as it affected communication, and laid the early foundations for modern technologies such as cell phones and the internet. The invention and widespread adoption of the telegraph, in combination with associated developments such as Morse code, have changed the nature of language and human thought processes. Many of the authors cited in the following exposition echoed a sentiment described by James W. Carey, namely that, Quote, the telegraph brought about changes in the nature of language, of ordinary knowledge, of the very structures of awareness. Its implications for human knowledge were the subject of extended, often euphoric and often pessimistic debate. Now that thought could travel by the singing wire, a new form of reporting and a new form of knowledge were envisioned that would replace traditional literature with a new and active form of scientific knowledge. End quote. Misha Schwartz writes that by 1835, Joseph Henry had demonstrated, at least in a laboratory and lecture hall setting, that an electromagnetic telegraph was possible. David Nye adds to this history that, quote, the telegraph astounded observers in 1838. Incredulity brought excited crowds to demonstrations, and the first telegraph offices often provided seating for the public, who could scarcely believe that it was possible to sever language from human presence. Twenty years after its invention, when thousands of miles of lines linked the states, the New York Times declared that the telegraph undoubtedly ranks foremost among that series of mighty discoveries that have gone to subjugate matter under the domain of the mind. Ramirez talks about the massive challenge of interconnecting the continents, explaining that, quote, the first attempt to stretch the cable across the Atlantic started in August 1857. Several cable connections were established and subsequently lost, until Friday the 13th of July, 1866. Europe was connected to North America by way of a small fishing village called Hearts Content. At the time, transmitting a message cost about $100 to send 10 words in 1866, about $1,300 today. This cost squeezed the language of news into a sparse and neutral style, end quote. Briggs and Maverick illustrate and describe the importance of this accomplishment, writing, Quote, if we reflect for a moment that the Great Atlantic Cable is the connecting link between America's web of 45,000 miles and Europe's system of 55,000 miles of telegraph wires, thus forming a vast system of 100,000 miles of wires, more than sufficient to put a quadruple girdle around the globe, some conception of its immense significance may be gained. End quote. Madger tells us that by the 1860s, the mail had become an affordable means of public communication in many countries. Though telegraph prices dropped over time, telegraphy never became an affordable medium for routine interpersonal communication. The core principles of the International Telegraphic Union received their fullest expression in the St. Petersburg Convention of 1875, which remained in place for the next five decades. End quote. Other systems for long-distance communication existed before the telegraph, but they all had significant limitations, such as dependence on weather or a maximum effective distance. Describing one example, Flitchie explains, quote, The secret consisted of placing in several consecutive posts persons who, having perceived through a telescope certain signals from the preceding post, transmitted them to the following ones, and so forth, end quote. In spite of its unique features, the telegraph did have its own limitations and was not immediately widely adopted. The reality was, most people either did not have access to a telegraph machine, or simply didn't feel they required it. For these reasons, quote, the semaphore telegraph, which was known and tested from the end of the 17th century, was not developed for another century. For lack of an appropriate social structure capable not only of imagining the advantages of long-distance communication, but also of backing the construction of a permanent network. End quote. Bray adds to this point, stating that, quote, most innovations and inventions in telecommunications and broadcasting have originated from a combination of need, to communicate person to person at a distance or to a mass audience, of recognition of the relevant scientific or engineering principles and possibilities, and at times of observation of phenomena. End quote. A key feature of the telegraph which distinguishes it from any other earlier communication technology is its ability to carry information faster than any form of physical transportation. Horses are fast and trains are even faster, but nothing physical can move faster than electricity. 
As Carey explains, quote, the telegraph allowed symbols to move independently of and faster than transportation. To put it in a slightly different way, the telegraph freed communication from the constraints of geography. The telegraph then not only altered the relation between communication and transportation, it also changed the fundamental ways in which communication was thought about. It provided a model for thinking about communication, a model I have called the transmission model, and displaced older religious views of communication even as the new technology was mediated through religious language." End quote. What Carey is referring to is the direction of transfer in the dissemination of knowledge. Under the more traditional and religious model, information was tightly shaped and controlled through literature held under the authority of a small group of priests or academics. Communication overall was much more one-directional, especially in transferring objective knowledge. The development and widespread adoption of the telegraph massively impacted social and political structures by providing information from other people and perspectives around the world. The rise of modern capitalism as we know it also owes much to the telegraph. Carey argues that, quote, the telegraph, in conjunction with the railroad, provided the setting in which modern techniques for the management of complex enterprises were first worked out, though for the telegraph in what was eventually monopolistic circumstances, end quote. Commercial markets were largely dependent on local supply and demand until the telegraph shortened the distance between cities and nations. This is truly the foundation of modern globalization as we know it today. While the telegraph had major implications for the growth of businesses, it also completely revolutionized the nature of warfare. There are several major examples of this. Looking at U.S. history, Ramirez posits that the War of 1812 could have potentially been minimized or avoided altogether. She explains that, quote, a truce was reached before the battle began. The news took weeks to arrive from Europe. Had the copper cable existed, lives could have been saved and there might have been a different portrait on the $20 bill, end quote. The Civil War, on the other hand, was directly and fundamentally altered by the North's ability to take full advantage of the new telegraph technology. Pierre Wilhelm explains that, quote, The systematic use of the telegraph by generals in the campaigns initiated the tactical war via electrical communication. For the first time, news of an ongoing battle from the front lines was disseminated by the telegraph in all directions. With the military telegraph, generals maintained direct contact with their armies, on the sites where maneuvers were being made, and with the chief of state. The first modern war room, for example, was an office in Washington run by a teenage telegraph operator, where President Lincoln gave his generals their orders and received news from the different fronts. One major factor in the massive growth and application of the telegraph was the spread of Morse code. It was a simple and effective way of transmitting messages with a single button. Bray tells the story of Samuel Morse, stating that, quote, by 1835, he had made a printing telegraph in which a key could switch on the current to an electromagnet as long as the key was held down, so causing a pencil to make a short or long mark on a moving sheet of paper, end quote. The telegraph switch system he developed allowed for his more widely known invention, the Morse code. Bray explains how the code quickly overtook the paper system because, quote, experienced operators learned to read the code by listening to the sounds of the clicking electromagnet without having to see the dots and dashes on the paper tape, thus giving rise to the simplest of all telegraph systems using a key, batter, line, and sounder, end quote. The telegraph not only allowed for information to be transferred back and forth, but also across national boundaries and eventually entire oceans. It fostered a new way of thinking about access to technology and created new problems that required creative solutions. How would warring nations handle telegraphs? How would messages be translated between languages? At first, systems were very complex and slow. Madger explains that in Europe, quote, frontier border stations were staffed by government operators from each country. Telegraphs from Paris, for example, would be received at Strasbourg by a French telegraph operator, handed to a German telegraph operator conveniently housed in the same location, who would translate the message into German, turn it back into Morse code, and send it along to Berlin. Similar human relay systems at other border crossings slowed the speed of the telegraph message, its most valuable attribute. End quote. Ultimately, there was a need to create compatible systems that could be interconnected and extended initially across continents and eventually across the globe. Madger states that, quote, the European unions of the 1850s addressed this problem head-on by requiring each contracting party to provide telegraph lines designed exclusively for international correspondence, eliminating the necessity for frontier operators. These arrangements also established standard administrative procedures for classifying and pricing international telegraphs and outlined technical details for interconnection, many of which informed the meeting in Paris that culminated in the creation of the International Telegraph Union, end quote. 
The growing importance of access to telegraph technology became more widely recognized over time, as evidenced by the St. Petersburg Convention. Madger points out that, quote, the St. Petersburg Convention marks the first occasion that the phrase droit de correspondre appears in an international document. Clearly, politicians and policymakers were realizing that access to communication technology was quickly becoming a fundamental human right. The lasting impact of the telegraph is yet to be seen. Its direct impact on modern communication technology has fundamentally altered human thought processes, from how we compose formal prose to the nature of our interpersonal relationships. John Bray points out that, quote, by removing the need to travel to communicate, the vast waste of human and material resources needed to provide ever-expanding rail and road facilities for countless millions of commuters every day from homes to city offices could be minimized, and by diverting much office work to villages and small towns, the quality of life could be enhanced and the rural economy sustained. Ramirez states that the telegraph cable started a linguistic evolution that continues today, as technology now sculpts language with constraints of 140 characters, the offering of emoticons, and the flourishing of acronyms. End quote. The British Empire, supported by global telegraph cables, quote, endowed the British with many lasting benefits, in particular the dominance of the English language. End quote. One of the biggest impacts that the telegraph had on language and education was a shrinking of time and space. In 1854, Cuba was in the process of extending telegraph lines across its railroads, stretching from east to west across the island. But information took five hours by steamship to reach their port-based telegraph stations. Eventually, they would need to create seafaring cables to connect them to the mainland in order to take advantage of this new technology and its major benefits. Socially, we are still experiencing shifts comparable to those during the growth of the telegraph. Ramirez writes that, quote, After the cable, a new social class of well-off cable station workers usurped the quiet village, causing friction by bringing in expensive amenities and squeezing out the original re residents. Replace cable stations with internet companies, and hearts content with San Francisco Bay Area, and this 19th century incident closely mirrors examples from the modern day. End quote. Chowdhury even goes so far as to state that, quote, the telegraph system was a crucial element in the constitution of the modern world, or the beginnings of the world that we know today, end quote. 